Hey, what's up, guys? Alright, so this chapter of Black Clover pretty much serves just to give us Zack's backstory. I mean, the chapter starts off with Mimosa and Asta. We see them still backed into a corner. Asta's trying his best to block all Landris' attacks, but it's not working. Mimosa's trying her best to heal Asta, but she can't keep up with the magic attacks. And they're pretty much just like, alright, we're fucked. And then Asta realizes, alright, I'm not fatigued anymore, so I can activate my black form. But I can only do that twice a day. That's a bit of new information we find out in this chapter, that he can activate that form twice a day. He trained himself up to do that. But he says that he was planning on saving it for you know, which I feel like was just foreshadowing to say that, hey, yeah, he's about to activate his black form. Yeah, we're saying that he can only do it twice a day, but we're going to see him in the finals use that against you know, to push. He's going to push himself past his limits, maybe activate like a new ability or a new power from that black form. And basically, we're just going to, even though he's saying they can only use it twice a day, we're going to see it again in the finals. This is just foreshadowing to that. But yeah, in order to activate his black form, he needs to be able to stand still for a few seconds. So he calls Zaxxon to basically protect him while he does it. Which, Zax kind of just like, really? You're going to call me in? You're going to, really? You're going to trust me? Alright, but you're going to owe me a favor after this. And the second Zax jumps in, he pretty much just steals the entire chapter. He pretty much just, the chapter pretty much, blah. And the second Zax jumps in, he pretty much becomes the focus point of the chapter, like he's been the focus point of the arc pretty much this entire time. So yeah, after he jumps in, we see a flashback to when he was like 12 years old. And when the flashback first started, I was a little bit annoyed with this chapter. Just because, I mean, we're like, what, 15, 16 chapters into this arc. And we've already had at least five flashbacks. It feels like we had a flashback every three chapters. In fact, yeah, we did. Three chapters ago, we had a flashback from Langris, and now we're having a flashback, flashback for Zax. And I feel like we've had flashbacks before that for, uh... So yeah, as soon as Zax jumps in to protect Asta, he pretty much becomes a focus point of this chapter. We, get st we go straight into a flashback to back when he was 12 years old. And when the flashback first started, I was a little bit annoyed with this chapter. Because we're like, what, 15, 16 chapters into this arc, and we've already had like five different flashbacks. It feels like we've had a flashback for every two chapters for a different character. In fact, yeah, we actually did have a flashback three chapters ago for Langris, and now we got one for Zax in this chapter. It just feels like too much. Like, I used to complain about One Piece having too many flashbacks in one arc, and this one is way past that. It's like three times as many flashbacks as One Piece does per arc. So, and we're not even done. We're only about halfway through this arc, so we're probably going to have at least another three more before the arc's over. So yeah, it just feels like too much. So yeah, the flashback anyway, it goes back to when Zax is like 12 years old. We see that his dad, and oh, we also find out that his name's Zora instead of Zax, that's his actual name. And we find out that his dad was actually a magic knight. They're both commoners, which makes sense, you know, his hatred towards nobles. And we find out that Zax actually really loved and respected and actually was inspired by his dad in a lot of ways, with both his magic and his appearance. And the reason why I say that is because, I mean... Alright, he didn't model his magic after his dad's magic, because we actually don't even find out what his dad's magic is in this chapter. But his dad did like to play a lot of pranks on him. And when we see the pranks in the flashback, they actually do resemble a lot of Zack's magic. So it's not that far to guess that even though you can't choose what magic you get, somehow Zack's kind of like inspired his magic or like kind of like focuses his magic towards being something like his dad's like tricks and whatnot because he wanted to represent, represent his dad. And we also see his dad give him a doll in this chapter or in the flashback, which actually, the doll's appearance looks exact, exactly like Zack's appearance in current day. In fact, I think his dad even names the doll Zax, which will explain why he takes up the name instead of going by his real name, Zora. So yeah, just based off the fact that Zax modeled his magic and his appearance off of stuff that reminded him of his dad, basically shows just how much he loved and respected his dad, which explains why he hates Magic Knights, or at least the noble ones, so much, because in this chapter, his dad, or in the flashback, we do see that his dad dies, leaving an orphan. There's no mention of the mom whatsoever. And while he's actually visiting his dad's grave, grieving over the fact that his dad's dead, the one person that he actually cared about and like loved and respected so much, we he overhears people from his dad's magic order talking about him. And instead of mourning their the comrade's death, they're laughing about it. They're noblemen who are just basically like, oh, he's a commoner, he's just staying in his place. That's why his own that's why his own allies backstabbed him on a mission. And when and once Zax overhears this. He just loses it. He just you know, he completely goes off the rails. He you could look at the look in his face, you could tell that he wants to attack those people right then and there. But he's only twelve years old and he had to wait till you're fifteen in order to get your magic abilities. So he knows he has to stand a chance. 
So we do a little bit of a flash forward in the flashback where we actually see him later on. It's not confirmed whether or not these are the same magic knights that were talking as Dad's grave. But we see him confront after he gets his magic abilities. He confronts two other magic knights. We see a montage of him just basically kicking asses of other magic knight orders who basically just use their power to abuse commoners. And then the final scene of the flashback is basically where we caught up to the present day, or at least the beginning of this arc where we first got introduced to Zax, where he attacks that magic knight who just basically talks down to him. We see the reason why he actually jumped in to attack that magic knight is because that magic knight was threatening an old lady who had accidentally bumped into him while she was at... Actually, no. She actually came to them because they had kidnapped her granddaughter, and she was asking them to give her back, and they basically were threatening her. So Zax jumped in to save, them, to save the old lady. And we find out at this point that Zax actually put magic circles all over his body. And that's the reason why Zax was actually able to beat the magic knight without lifting a finger or getting a scratch on him. Because when the magic knight attacked him, he activated his reflected magic, which he put magic circles of that all over his body. And it just reflected the magic knight's ability right back at him. Now, this seems like a smart idea. It seems like all right, if your magic ability is to put magic circles on stuff and then you can activate a trap, it seems like a great idea to put your most powerful reflecting magic on yourself and it's like, all right, any attack that goes at me, just going to get reflected right back at my opponent. It makes sense. But we find out in this chapter that putting magic circles on you and imbuing your own magic attack on yourself is a huge risk. It could actually cost you your life, which we find out from everyone being surprised at the fact that he has magic circles on his body. In, in fact, I think they even say that it's basically him attacking himself over and over again, and it has to have a huge strain on his body. So the fact that he's willing to go this far in order to get his revenge, like he's willing to sacrifice his own life in order to get his revenge for his dad's death, it just shows how dedicated or how much he loved his dad and how much he's dedicated to avenging him, which I'm all for. After reading this chapter, I was like, all right, Zach, I get you. I get your character. I understand where you're coming from. You have every right to be angry. You have every right to want revenge. But do chill out a little bit. I mean, not every noble magic knight is like, straight up evil thinks they're better than commoners i mean we've seen plenty of them so far who don't think that who don't act that way and basically he just needs to chill out i can i understand going against the people that betrayed his dad i understand the people those two knights that laughed at his dad after uh his death i get going against them but dude you need to chill out a little bit and i'm hoping by the end of this arc maybe by interacting with asta and uh, you know mimosa and other magic knights or other noble magic knight wielders who like aren't stuck up and aren't who don't think they're better than the commoners maybe interacting with them will you know calm them down a little bit and make them realize all right not everyone's a dick but who knows it probably won't do it maybe asshole will end up having to fight him later on or maybe he'll end up joining the evil guys who knows but yeah that's pretty much all that happened in the chapter it was a pretty interesting chapter even though i do resent the fact that we got another flashback in this chapter the flashback in itself was good but still the fact that we got like we're on flashback number five only halfway through the arc it just it seems like too much to me. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop me a like. Subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Comment down below with your thoughts and theories. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.